Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lucy. I'm a physician and an artist and welcome back to those who have been following for quite some time. So excuse my voice, I am a little bit under the weather and so that's why I sound this way. But I did want to make a video because I've been getting a lot of questions about how do you sell your art? What do you use to make your designs? What are some of the markers that you're using as far as the paint pens or um, anything that's sort of the gold leafing or any of the gold that you see when I embellish my paintings. And so I'm here to answer some of these questions for you today. And so this video, you know, I'm not going to be, I'm not painting this video, but I am showing you some of the things that I do use to help market some of my um, paintings, to help market my um, creations, and also what I've been using in terms of markers and pens and anything from that standpoint. The first thing, I'm wearing gloves because when I do touch some of these paintings or in some of these um, prints that I've made also, I don't want to get my fingerprints on them, any oils that I have on my fingertips. You know, I do tend to wipe things off first, but for extra protection, if I don't have my cloth gloves nearby, which I didn't today, but I do have these and so I put those on so that way I don't end up with fingerprints on some of these things here. All right. When it comes to finding out what your market is, you know, it takes time to build up your clientele. It takes time to figure out what is your actual gold, what you intend to um, do with yourself, right? And what I mean by that is, am I creating art just to create and then just sell just because people are doing it? Or is this something that is actual an actual business for me? Is it something that I tend to pursue long term or is it just a hobby that I just want to be able to feed and feed in and feed out? And so for me, um, my art is one of my businesses. So that means that, you know, I have an actual business. I have an EIN number. I pay taxes. I file taxes. And so it's a corporation essentially is what it ends up being, which is why for me, it's, you know, serious when it comes to selling and distribution and anything from that standpoint, so marketing. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, it takes money to make money. Um, most times, you know, I say most times because there's other ways to make money without having to spend some money first. But in the art industry, you know, it's up and down, right? Because a lot of times you'll see that a lot of the artists that make, you know, that sell their paintings or for millions of dollars are dead, right? And I'm pretty sure a lot of you want to be up and well and living while making, you know, your money, right? So you can actually enjoy enjoy what you make. And so the key thing is to, one, you know, figure out what it means for you. The next thing is, you know, you see what's out there, you see what people are doing, and a lot of time you'll out here, the market is so saturated, so I'll never be able to make money. Well, guess what? Every market is saturated, but it doesn't mean people doesn't don't make money. For example, I'm a physician, right? So people can say, oh, that's so saturated. I can't become a doctor and make money because there's too many of you guys, right? But, you know, doctors are coming up every year and they're making money, right? Because there's a need for it. So you have to figure out, you know, if there's a need for your art or for your type of art. Yes, can it be saturated? Absolutely. But somebody out there, you know, wants what you create. So you may not think that what you have is worth it, but when it comes to art, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, literally. I know you might be tired of hearing that, but it's true. And the reason why is, you know, you can go to different art shows or different museums and galleries across the world, and you see a lot of pieces that you'll say, I never paid that for this. I don't even like this, you know. Why would people somebody pay money for this thing that I don't think is pretty? Somebody does, right? Somebody does. And so you may think, I don't like my art. Or you may have people critique you, you know, and trolls online. And they'll say, this is so ugly. Why are you doing this? You know, I would never pay money for that. That's fine because I didn't create it for you specifically, right? Whoever it belongs to will find its way, you know, to this painting, you know, as the, you know one day. All right? And so people will say that for any profession, right? For art, if you are an educator, if you are 
a lawyer, engineer, architect, there's always going to be something that some people don't like about what you do. And that is just fine, right? Because they are one person in a million or a billion. And so if art is something you want to do, go for it. So let's get into some of the things that I do specifically when it comes to, you know, selling my pieces, right? So outside of building my clientele, there's the marketing aspect. Because people say, well, why do you sell your stuff? Well, usually it's online. Um, but I do have a website. I have uh, a social media presence. And so I'm across the different platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok. I'm not on LinkedIn, but um, well, I am, but not for, you know, the art stuff. But I do continue to plan on expanding those, you know, venues. But mostly I sell through my website or, you know, online, word of mouth. People will see my art somewhere, a friend's house or a hospital or a clinic or whatever the case may be. And I'll say, hey, who's the artist? Who did this? Let me contact them and go from there. And so that does happen also. But majority of the time, it's going to be, you know, through online or word of mouth. And it kind of spreads like wildfire from here. Now, some of the things that I do help to market is some of these. And so to people who have bought my art previously, um, so that means like previous clients and stuff like that, you know, I'll do promotional sales. I'll send emails, you know, so you keep in touch, right? Because your current customers are going to be your best advertisement. Because, you know, they like your product and they're going to, one, return to get more and they'll spread the word also for you. They'll say, hey, if you're looking for a unique piece of art, you know, I know somebody who I, you know, purchased from and I really like their stuff, you know, good, great quality and someone just check them out. And then they spread it that way for you. So they become, you know, free marketing essentially for you. But I also have these little cute cards, for example, that have different types, but I'm just showing you this, for example. So these little cute cards, but on the back, you know, this here, so that now, it's like a thank you that I have for my um, previous clients that I, you know, that's purchased and that's for them to enjoy um, a 15% off discount on, you know, their next order. But as my YouTube subscribers, you know, I'll show this for you too, so that way if you guys want to get on the website, Feel free to use the discount code here, right here. And I'll put it in the description below too. So that way you can also enjoy 15% off any purchase off my website as well. So this is something cool for you guys. But everybody that I, you know, purchases an original or some sort or print, you know, I include this with their purchase so that way they'll have for a future purchase. All right. Sometimes, you know, I'll do... Uh, little giveaways like you know via you know, Facebook and I'll say hey here's I mean you know this particular print or original or what have you and you know I'm doing a giveaway for whatever reason that is and I'll have people comment under that thread and literally I will have each person's name put in a bowl literally or sometimes I'll show you guys I'll use my son's Halloween basket so a little spider-man and I'll toss all the names in here and literally, I'll have one of my kids, you know, pick a name out the basket, and that person is the winner for whatever the giveaway may be. And again, word of mouth, they see these items, somebody else does, and it spreads, and here you are having, getting somebody else more purchases to contact you for and selling your artwork. Other things that I like to do that are very simple is these magnets. And so I'll show you guys some of these for example so this is well this is stuck together but it's two there you go that's one so magnets some of my pieces that people really like and I turn them into little magnets and I do those as little thank yous giveaways so you purchase a piece from me and you know there's a little envelope that I also attach um, when I mail your stuff out and I put either a little magnet or again something else to say thank you and people love these. If you're doing art fairs, little other shows like that, or, you know, you're out selling art, you know, garage sales, whatever the case may be, but having little things like this, little trinkets, people will gravitate towards little things because it's easy to carry, it's easy to put somewhere, can fit anywhere, and always seen because it's on the refrigerator, so you go to the fridge quite often, right? And that's another way to continue to, you know, market yourself 
on a daily basis to people, right? And this way they can always come back to you because they say, hey, I got this magnet from such and such. Let me go ahead and, you know, check them out because this is really cool. And so offering a variety of items to people, you know, can also help. There's the social media, social media aspect. There's the website aspect. There's the word of mouth aspect. And you are going to be your biggest cheerleader, right? Your biggest marketing person. And so if you have um, your stuff on a t-shirt or a bag, because I have my stuff on bags and t-shirts, and when you're walking around town, people will see these things on you and say, wow, this is a really cool design. Who made it? I did. Really? Do you have a website? Do you have a business card? Absolutely. And then this way, they can go on, check it out, and boom, you have sales, right? Now, when you do make a painting, and let's say you make a painting, there's plenty that I make that I do not like, and they'll sit around for months to years, and then I'll come back to them and say, hey, let me embellish, add some things to it, and see what happens. And so when I do that, I tend to... Pretty much you're recreating a painting. So a painting that you probably didn't sell or you probably didn't even show to anybody because you thought it wasn't sellable, right? And then you recreate it and then now it's like, whoa, now I have this piece that I definitely want to market. And people will say, hey, what'd you use? How'd you do it? And so always be able, if you, if you want to, but sharing information with other people, it does not diminish any sales that you have. It just brings more people to you. So here's some things that I use. For example, I have a gold leaf pen or leafing pen. So here's this one here. And again, I'll put all this stuff in the description below for the video so you guys can see this. So I'll use this to embellish at times. I also have some um, deco art. So this one here, the deco colors. This is white, I believe. This is acrylic pen. And here's what it will look like. So... There you go. So you can embellish with these. You can write. You can do anything. Some of my favorites are these here. So these are my absolute favorites. They come in different sizes. All right. These are thinner ones, but different sizes because then I could do a lot more with these and be more precise depending on what it is that I'm, I'm actually painting or drawing or sketching out. Now, don't forget, people, you know, love originals, but sometimes a lot more people love prints because they can be more affordable for them. And so for those who love prints, because again, more affordable, you can frame them how you want to frame them, put them where you want to put them. You know, they're easier to carry and maintain for most people then that's an option for them too. So here are some other prints that I have. So for example, right now I'm doing a pediatric series for my art and I offer, you know, well, the original will be offered at some point, but also prints of varying sizes. And so I'll show you, well, I'll just turn this around, but see, like this is an eight by eight, 10 by 10, 12 by 12, very great quality prints. And different places can do these prints for you. So I'm gonna show you this one, for example. See that? Nice and glossy. But different companies, like sometimes you can do your local print shop, which I use quite often um, near me. There's also, um, Staples, depending on the quality of the one near you, there's um, Vista Print can do these things. There's also Redbubble, there's Printify, there's Printful. You can even print at home if you have a great laser um, printer, like photo printer, and I do that at times too, depending on what I'm printing. So all those different things can get your prints out. And the key thing is just to start, you know, use it various services for printing the same image and see which one gives you the best quality for what you're looking for specifically and seeing what they, all they offer all right now when you are 
doing these, for example, right? So for comparison, like this one here, I print at home. So you can see what it looks like, right? And then if I want, you know, bigger, I may, you know, go somewhere else to get it printed. So this is bigger. All right? And so very similar quality, just about the same quality, I would say anyway, right? But the scale is just different as far as if I need this size, I can do from home. If I need a lot bigger, I want to make sure that whatever I end up using, I can get the same quality or even better. But at least, you know, I know that I have a good quality printer at home, so I need whatever I use to match that or surpass it. So these are some things to consider also when, you know, you're wanting to go out there and sell your artwork. You want quality, right? Even when you're using the different cam a canvas, for example, if you're painting or you're doing fluid art and there's different canvas types, there's level one, you know, level two, level three, you want to make sure that, you know, you get one, you're using very good quality, but when it comes to pricing, that's when things can get tricky, right? Because you want to be able to make sure that your price, one, matches your experience and the quality of your work, what you're using, as far as the paints, the or the or the pens, the canvas, and the varnish or the finish, everything has to be very good quality to sell at quality prices, right? So, for example, if I am an inexperienced artist and I just started doing fluid art, you know, a month ago, and my stuff is okay compared to some others out there. What am I going to be selling my things for? Like if I'm doing a small 8 by 8 canvas and again, I'm a new painter for about a month, fluid art, and I'm trying to sell my 8 by 8 for, you know, 500 bucks. Unless if it was really, really good with the most amazing quality of everything, potentially, right? Maybe. But if it's not, you know, as good as what you see out there and you didn't use you know, the good quality paints that will fade over, you know, over time, over a short period of time. And the varnish you use, you know, won't really protect the painting for a duration that is seen, that is deemed, um, you know, uh, acceptable, right? Then you have to think about, you know, how you price things. And there are different price charts out there, you know, you know, there's not one particular that I use, to be honest, but... One, you have to know your worth. You have to know at least what the materials that you use were. So when it comes to, you know, selling and setting prices, one, the materials that you're using, you know, price them out. You know, make sure you, you know, whatever you do, you want to sell for a profit, right? You want to at least, you know, make back what you spent on, you know, the materials, like the canvas, the, the paint, the paint pens, you know, the varnish, whatever it is, you want to at least make that back and a little bit of a profit. And so when you're selling, if you offer if you offer free shipping, right, just make sure that you're aware where you are shipping to because shipping to, you know, California versus shipping to Texas or New York, you have the same item that you're shipping to, you know, to those three different locations and with very different shipping prices, right? And so whatever you are shipping, make sure that you're including shipping, you know, in your price. Also, if not, you'll be losing money and you literally, you know, you are giving away something for free each time to the point that you end up in the negatives because you are, you know, you're spending more than you're taking in. What I mean by that is if you spent, $25 on materials for a painting and then you sell it for you know $20 and offer free shipping so that means that you already lost $5 and whatever amount let's say shipping was another $5 so that means that you lost $10 you're already so it took you 25 bucks to make this painting but you undersold it for $20 and you also offer to ship it for free. So that means that you're technically 
you you know you lost money on that end so just be mindful you know when it comes to that right and you know and it takes time to get comfortable pricing your stuff because you're always looking at others and people will say oh i would only pay this for this but somebody else may say oh i want to pay anything for that while somebody else may offer you 10 times as much than you ever expected for the same thing and so just keep that in mind and make sure that you know you can stand your ground Know what you're worth is going to be one of the key things, right? Um, another example is if you decide to frame something, you know, is the frame included in the price or is the frame not included? And if it's the original, and if it's an original, you know, what that cost is, you know, versus not. And so here's one of mine. All right. So this is framed. All right. And, you know, solid frame, varnished, so not resin, you know. And as far as the pricing, it varies. So as far as the pricing, you know, that would be different compared to if this was a print. So a print, you know, about similar sizes, maybe a couple inches less, not framed. So price, very different. It's not the same, it's not the same thing, but if this was like a painting, the same um, painting on a print, price is still different, right? Because print versus original. Or original, not framed versus original frames again different prices why because the frame itself is costly and when you're shipping it's gonna make it the package heavier so different price now I know I'm going over um, a lot of information and you know and I'll probably do videos where I focus on one thing specifically but I want to make sure that I kind of cover a gist of things right now, when it comes to art, you know, I do also offer a certificate of authenticity. Here's what mine look like also. So there's different types for the paintings. So I have these smaller ones. I also have larger ones. You know, it just depends on, you know, what I'm putting in, what I'm putting it up with. All right. But the key thing is that, you know, one, you're consistent. And you have to decide, you know, who your audience is, who's your target audience, and what is it that you're really trying to do? Is, is it just a hobby, you know, or is it something that's becoming a business for you? Now, it's fine if it's a hobby and, you know, and you still want to sell some stuff here and there so that way you're able to supply your hobby supply, you know, with more paints and canvases, you know, and you know, that's fine. But just make sure that, you know, if you are doing it just for that way, that you're at least selling it for what you put into it. All right. So that way you just don't lose money and you're, you know, spending a lot more than what you're getting in return. And the next day, you know, you're like, hey, I'm broke because I did all this stuff. I'm not selling anything the way I want to because you're probably selling yourself short on these different things. When it comes to photo art, is the market saturated? Yes, but it's saturated for a lot of different things, even if it's not photo art related. It's saturated for, you know all kinds of professions. But the key is, you know, what makes you different? How is yours different than the next person's pores? How, you know, what do you offer that somebody else may not offer um, in general, all right? And so the key is to make yourself stand out, you know, and find out what makes you different. You know, do collaborations, you know, offer some giveaways, you know, just put feelers out there if that's what you wanna do. But the key thing, too, is to have fun. So there's a lot of key aspects. You probably have a lot more questions, which is fine. You can go ahead and, you know, put them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer all the questions that you have. You can also check out my website, which is below in the description, and you can also use a Contact Us link through my website to ask more questions if you need to, which is totally fine. But just so you guys have, again, a quick recap, you know, offer thank you cards 
to your audience, you know, little trinkets, you know, to your audience, whether it's keychains, magnets, whatever the case is, have different things available with your product on it. If you're embellishing or you're just, you know, using, doing artwork with just paint pens, here's some of my favorites. So I like to use these different sizes. Here are some other ones. Different sizes come with a whole bunch of them. I use so much with making my other ones that I had to buy some new ones. So I'm glad they came in time for this video. Lots of new ones here. So can't wait to open all these. And don't forget, offer some prints. You can test out your home printer and see what kind of quality you get. Now the paper, um, I got the photo paper. You can get those from Staples. You can get it from Walmart, Amazon, anywhere online. Just make sure you know which one fits your actual printer. Make sure that your ink and printer is a type that can actually do this um, as well. And again, free marketing, right? So whether you're using social media for the free marketing, you know, word of mouth, you know, you have your pieces, you know, at a friend's house, or let's say you donate, you donate some of your paintings to um, a shelter of sorts or you know, community center and people will see it, right? And then they can ask, hey, who did this? You know, where'd you get it from? Because I want something for me also. And then, you know, it just rolls out from there. All right. But again, thank you guys for being with me and watching. I know I'm under the weather, so my voice is not the best, but I hope this was okay for you guys. And I cannot wait to see you guys again next week, which at that point, I will be painting. I'm in the process of mixing some paint for something. I haven't done like a Dutch pour that I actually really like in a long time. I've been working on an anatomy series. And so as you've been seeing, if you follow me on social media. And so, but I'm looking forward to getting back in and getting my hands dirty with some good old Dutch pours and go from there. All right. So I will see you guys next week. Take care. And again, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing, liking, and all of that. All right. And so looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. And we will talk soon. Good day.